Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 15th, 2020 edition of the Sand Center and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I wrote a quick diary about the dot well known directorates, something we have mentioned in diaries in the past, but figured it's time to really take a look at all the different features that are available in this directory and of course what files you may find in it. I highlighted uh, six different ones that I found interesting also from a security point of view and also some that are actually being used like many features of course there are probably a couple dozen different files that are defined for dot well known but many of them you won't really see used much now the one that's the most commonly used is the acme challenges that's of course for the acme protocol to retrieve tls certificates from certificate authorities like let's encrypt one uh, that's a bit new but safari started to implement this is the change password file this actually just redirects uh, to a web page on your site that will allow the user to change their password. And the idea is to make here for password managers, if a user would like to change a password in the password manager, to then automatically send the user to the right page uh, to change their password. Pretty uh, simple standard actually, not 100% sure how useful it is. Uh, the Safari implementation I find a little bit uh, clumsy, but uh, well, uh, take a look. I think it's something it's easy to implement. So it's something you probably uh, do want to do and take a look at the diary for the additional uh, features that I have listed there. There's also a URL to the IANA page that lists all the official registered file names in dot well known. And then Pentest Partners uh, took a closer look at a Bluetooth Low Energy padlock from 360 Lock. And now probably the biggest mistake that this company made is claiming that their lock is hack proof uh, because apparently it uses blockchain. Well, it still uses Bluetooth Low Energy and Bluetooth Low Energy is often vulnerable to replay attack, which is exactly what this lock is vulnerable to. So an attacker only needs to be able to observe the unlock process from an authorized user and will then be able to just replay the code. Also mechanically, the lock is not really all that uh, robust and can easily be opened with a tap from a rubber mallet. And Taiwanese security researcher Orange is back. Uh, this is an individual that tends to go after enterprise systems and the latest target is the mobile device management or MDM system mobile iron now uh, this vulnerability was used by orange uh, to successfully attack uh, facebook and claim a bug bounty and orange now went ahead and published a blog post with sufficient details to exploit this vulnerability there are actually a total of three vulnerabilities that were disclosed one is a remote code execution vulnerability that's the big one here then there's also an authentication bypass and arbitrary file reading. The root problem here is JNDI injection and the vulnerability is very similar to the F5 Big IP TMUI remote code execution that has heavily been exploited since it was released. Now, what we have going for us here is that Orange did responsibly disclose this vulnerability. Mobile Iron did learn about the vulnerability in April and released a patch on on June 15th. Now, Orange has been monitoring the patch rate and it's now, if I read the graph correctly, sort of in the 60% range, which uh, I guess uh, Orange considered sufficient to release details about this vulnerability. 
And well, everybody now had a few months to apply the patch. So if you haven't done that yet, if you didn't know that this is a severe issue, certainly go ahead and apply it as soon as possible. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.